So I'd like to welcome you to this interview with uh, Maxime Durand, World Design Director at Ubisoft Montreal. My name is Lukas Hases. I'm an historian and postdoctoral researcher at the University of Oldenburg in Germany. My co-organizer here is uh, Patrick Heike, trainee teacher at the Artland Gymnasium Klagenbrück. And uh, Maxime, uh, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. We feel very privileged uh, to be given this opportunity. Thank you also for sending us uh, the pre-recorded presentation about the ideas and concepts behind the discovery tour, including such a wealth of information and the practical tutorial, and particularly for presenting it in such an accessible and, and exciting way. And uh, the presentation actually already covers a lot of uh, the topics that we will raise and discuss with our students during the workshop, like your cooperation with historians and archaeologists, the historical sources that you use, uh, or your view on the topic of authenticity. So the following questions are a bit more specific reacting to your presentation and covering questions that we still have. And during the workshop, we will first show your presentation followed by the interview as a Q&A session. And we will gladly report back on the outcome of the workshop and the feedback of our students. Uh, and we definitely share your position and viewing cooperation and dialogue between universities and game developers and schools as key to the future of both video games and historical research and education with mutual uh, benefits. Thus, we hope our workshop in Oldenburg can contribute at least partially to fulfilling this aim. And thank you for your time, your openness and your support. We have prepared 10 questions and I will start with the first round of questions and Patrick then will take over for the second half. So first question. Uh, in an interview from 2020, you were described, and I quote, as a more influential historian than most professors at universities will ever be. And although I myself uh, work as an historian uh, at a university, and I'm not sure that all of my colleagues would share this estimation of their sphere of influence, uh, I, for my part, tend to agree. Uh, as the world design director behind the franchise of the Discovery to uh, working at one of the most successful game studios uh, in the world, you have access to a very valuable resource, the people's free time and their intrinsic motivation Motivation. However, with great power uh, comes great responsibility. So game studios will shape the way children, pupils and students will come to perceive and understand history in the future. Thus, to begin with, we wanted to ask you as an ambassador of this increasingly influential medium, in your opinion, what do computer games add to the learning experience of pupils and students of history in class that other uh, long established educational media cannot? So video games are still rarely um, used in history classes. Why? should teachers use it? Well, uh, again, thank you so much for the invitation. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm the most influential historian uh, that, that there is. Uh, it, it would be very, very hard to to find that out, uh, but I do acknowledge that the that video games have a tremendous uh, sense of attraction, and and they are played very vastly around Earth uh, right now. In many countries, it has become the most popular form of uh, culture. Uh, so, uh, depending on on people, they they might not accept it as a form of culture, but nonetheless, it's there and it's very present. Uh, and the same way that I think we. Uh, uh, movies, television, comics, and, and new forms of media in the last 100 and, or 150 years have, have appeared. There's always, uh, there's always a period of transition uh, where, where people ask themselves questions on the value of, of these uh, elements. There's a sense of, of, uh, of a fear also that is quite normal, I think, in the human experience. Um, but when it comes to video games, What's the difference that uh, what, that it brings that, that other mediums don't have? I think it's it's the the strength of the immersion. It's uh, it's also the ability for people that are playing the game to have agency, to be able to control what they are doing. They they cannot do everything, but at least they can have a sense of control over the medium that many other experiences don't give. So books, for instance. Uh, the, the good side of books, I think, on my personal perspective, is that what you read, you can imagine it. So in some ways, um, when we're reading even a historical book, we're actually cheating because everyone that's reading the book is imagining something different. And we're trying to, to create that complete scene in our head, uh, but we never actually realize it in the treaty world or in a form that is available for others to see it or to in immerse in it, whereas the video game offers that complete view of the past or, or a complete view of a, a universe that the video game wants to bring forward. And I think that's the biggest strength of the video game. And it's it's a strength that can be leveraged by uh, by education if, if the format or if teachers are interested in using it. 
leads over to the second question. Very good. Um, the historian and geographer David Loventhal once coined the app phrase that the past is still a foreign country. So a major premise in historical research today, and also particularly in our education system in Germany, in our history classes, is to learn to defamiliarize uh, the past in order to realize its otherness. So in German schools, for instance, where competence-based learning is regarded as most crucial for the pupils' uh, development, one of the most important competences taught is indeed to be this understanding um, otherness, I quote, understanding different and strange life worlds. And in contrast, as you said, however, the idea of the discovery tour uh, is more about familiarizing um, the past in order to awake interest on the part of the player. It feels like almost like being a tourist in the past. And one can even take on different roads of historical persons and the level of immersion, as you said, in the created life world of the past is much greater. Uh, this is of course also a striking uh, strategy and it encourages uh, creativity and imagination, um, as you said, on the side of the pupils, but it also is the exact opposite uh, approach to a defamiliarization. Thus, we would ask whether and how you try um, and sensitize players to the issue that the past and its people were different to our current experience and worldviews, and how much difference can be incorporated uh, in your world design before it comes too dissonant as a gaming experience? Uh, I think the first part of the question is that, uh, uh, I guess, uh, passion and curiosity are sparked by something. Uh, whether it's an experience that we have as a youth or as an adult, uh, is it because we've seen a, a, a TV show, we read a book, a, a comic book, or we played a video game? I think the, that's the first part. Uh, and, and I think this is the value of, of a game like the Discover Tour. Uh, the idea is that we want to spark passion. Uh, when it comes to authenticity, to the completeness of the image of the past, um, of course, there's there's uh, there's a role that we can play as a company in a video game like the Discovery Tour, where the idea is that we want to explain where the information comes from. Uh, so. In the Discovery Tour, as you're playing these tours, you're encountering information, you're encountering artifacts that comes from museum, and then you see how they, these are small pieces that are brought together. One of the biggest difficulty of the video game is that in some ways we want to create a, a sense of, uh, of strangeness, a sense of, of discovering something new. So we, we, we bring in factors from the past that are different than than modern day vision, um, like uh, mythical beliefs, for instance, like uh, different ways, uh, political systems, for instance, uh, social, social systems that are different. But at the same time, we also have to bring familiar aspects uh, that are, that I guess that are uh, valuable throughout human history, like uh, a family, a uh, sense of bounds, uh, a sense of, of uh, honor, for instance. These are things that people from modern day can relate to. So I guess these, this is the, the balance where we're trying to, to play with. And, and we cannot explain everywhere where we're differing from history, uh, where we're completing the, the portrait. Uh, but at least we're, I guess we're trying to give both information and at the same time try to uh, to uh, create that sense of uh, critical thinking that uh, the information that is brought into the game comes from historical sources or comes from archaeology and then it leads to a discussion I guess that either pupils can have with with their student with their teachers or parents can have with their kids or friends together for instance. We'll come back to this uh, question about strangers once again in, in question four but first question three um, is uh, in another interview, so we read some interviews, uh, you mentioned that you view your, your job mainly in the role of a mediator and you refer to the importance of balance and compromise and diplomacy. And uh, I must have work in a digitization project and a cultural heritage project and I know how complicated interdisciplinary uh, work can be sometimes. Uh, but in your mediating role, this seems even more challenging, especially considering uh, the time constraints that game developments can present. So our question would be, were there any times when the two worlds, your two roles, the role of a game designer um, with this uh, worldviews and of a historian by profession uh, collided? Well, it's easy, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Basically every day. Can imagine uh, that, yeah. Uh, uh, ever since the first day I joined Ubisoft, I, I think I realized that, that as a historian, uh, it, it's, it's always difficult to, to, to try to balance with the, the fun factor and entertaining factor of the video game. and. Uh, not, not only because of artistic liberties, but also because of technical constraints and human constraints as well. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, we cannot, the, the, the video game is not a cre recreation of the past. Uh, and, and to be super honest, there are a lot of time periods that if people played them in a game where they're expecting action, 
they would play something in the past that might not go into their expectation. There's there probably be, will not be the things that they would hope for, like combat or navigation. Uh, so so there's that that's part of the balance. Uh, the other hard aspect, and I think we. I don't usually talk a lot about it, is that a, a video game is a, is a form of art in the way that throughout the, let's say the four years uh, of a development of one of the Assassin's Creed game, um, when we start with, with a, a game idea, uh, it's very, very different from what we get in the end, ultimately, uh, because we we test and we balance and we always test and we do player testing. And then there's a very subjective part that, uh, that comes from from trial and error, and I think that's the that's the reason why every day can be a, a big challenge to find this balance between history and entertainment. Thank you, especially for your openness. This is <laughs> it's good to hear. Um, so, in the next question is the and, uh, the discovery tool is approved without any age restriction. Um, because it does not feature, and you uh, said it uh, just a minute ago, combat uh, or the dep depiction of violence. Uh, moreover, you also mentioned that the tour is designed to take away any pressure from the player. So in your recreations, you visualize the landscape and architecture and cultures of the past. And as you said, uh, put a special emphasis on, on daily routines and the var variety of topics is, uh, I must admit, really breathtaking. Um, and in the presentation, yeah, you send us, you also refer to the aim of the discovery tour to engage players emotionally, uh, and you just repeated that. Uh, this leads to the starting point of our next question. So gaming is primarily, as you said, for entertainment. Learning, however, can be entertaining, uh, but also must uh, involve critical thinking and engagement and debate and sometimes even conflict. Therefore, we wanted to ask, uh, what about this uh, stimulating such emotions as shock? or pity in the discovery to us. Specifically, I have in mind the time of the French Revolution, uh, when everyday life was characterized by the struggle for food, then later omnipresent terror, and then the shadow of the guillotine, elements in fact represented in the original game. So Assassin's Creed uh, Unity, also the topic of slavery um, with regard to the colonial era, but also during ancient Greece, access, brutality, oppression, slavery, and the struggle for survival were daily occurrences uh, for many shaping their lives and their daily routines also, but it is not represented in the discovery tours. Um, thus our question would be, are there any plans or concepts to include to go to the tragic, to the dark side of history, so to speak, in discovery tours uh, of the future, because this in turn would uh, particularly in, uh, would be interesting for using the discovery tour in upper secondary, uh, advanced, and university classes. Uh, so, so first off, I think I I, I should mention that uh, I think we can make great games without violence, and I think the discovery tours uh, up so far hasn't been so much a game that then it has been a digital immersion. So because we've created tours, not exactly a, 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 a let's say a, a fun and engaging game like we could we could do it. And that was vo a voluntary purpose uh, because our idea was that we wanted to to become more accessible even for people that who are not gamers. Um, it is being said, uh, there, there could be ways to engage more uh, and to even to use more quest-based system, for instance, where a, narr a narrative could play a bigger part, uh, even without showing violence, but mm -hmm. uh, we could be implying it. Uh, one reality that we're facing as game developers is that we're re releasing the Discovery Tour, for instance, in, in worldwide, and each region, each country has a different system of age rating, mm -hmm. and these age rating are defining what and what we cannot uh, show and talk about uh, in the content of the Discovery Tour. Uh, so we're, we're trying to find this balance where we can explain a lot of historical topics, and we, we don't know what level people have when they're starting the experience of the discovery tour maybe they 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 know everything and they are at the post doctoral research level uh, and maybe they will learn some some things in the discovery tour but if you're starting with with a youth that's 10 years old or 7 years old mm -hmm. They're not starting from the same point. So we have probably the biggest challenge ahead of us as designers to try to craft an experience that can be suitable for everyone from seven to to no limit of age. Uh, and that's that's a true challenge. And it's 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 difficult. Um, in, re in reality, ultimately, we have some content that is very advanced for young learners, and some content that might not be in advanced enough for uh, for or learners that are 
already more familiar with the subject. Uh, this being said, we're we're still we're in touch with uh, students, we're teachers, with professors. Uh, we've been in touch with them way before we started working on the discovery tour because we wanted to 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 do this work of uh, this professional work of science, uh, and we're still doing a lot of, of discussion and research to make sure that what we're doing is the most appropriate is the best formula for school so we're still uh, evolving um and we are uh, as, as we are on the verge of, of releasing our upcoming discovery tour uh we already announced uh very very briefly that there will be some changes uh and i i'm very eager to show more of that in the future and this uh, cooperation and the dialogue is in fact so important as you said okay i'm handing over to patrick now yeah, now it's my time uh, to ask you some questions. Um, assassins and Templars may be interesting, but we also like to know a bit more about uh, the historian uh, Maxime Duro himself. Um, could you maybe expand a little bit more um, on your personal intent when you came up with the idea of the discovery tour at Ubisoft? And could you maybe tell us a little bit more about how a regular working day in the life of the historian Maxime Duro at Ubisoft looks like? So, so maybe uh, if we take a step back, I joined Ubisoft in 2010 after graduating in history at the University of Montreal. Uh, to be, and I've always been very clear about this. At that point, I wasn't sure that I wanted to do history anymore. Uh, I had work in museums as a guide, uh, and as a researcher, I wasn't sure where I was fitting in because I had a, a very keen interest in in uh, public history, and uh, I didn't know exactly how to get there. But thankfully, I, I never had to struggle with that question for too long because uh, when I finished and graduated, I, I, I started right away at Ubisoft. Um, so, so again, that was in 2010. And ever since I started working there, I realized that there was a huge potential to reuse these environments uh, because we, are, we were having discussions with museums uh, already over 10 years ago and with uh, university professors, mostly historians, uh, very few people back then. And we had some, some testimonials of teachers that are that were trying to find ways to use Assassin's Creed in their classes, but the mature rating was preventing them from from really using the power of the video game so that stuck in my in my head and along the years with uh, with Jean Guedon who's uh, who was creative director on the Assassin's Creed franchise for many years uh, we both had the same idea and at some point uh, at, just after we released Assassin's Creed Unity in 2014 uh, I think we both wanted to do something like this and we actually both were working on our ways with inside Ubisoft until we, we met and realized that we were actually doing it and so we're very thankful that the company believed in a, in a project like this uh, because it, nobody has done it before in the AAA industry. So it was something new. Uh, it, was, it wasn't easy to prove where we would be going with, with this. It was going to be trial and error. And now that we're, we're on the verge again of releasing our third discovery tour, I think it's, uh, it's fair to say that it was, uh, it was a good idea. But Every day is, is, is a big challenge. And, and to come back to, your, uh, to the latest part of your question, what is a regular day in Maxime Durand's life? Um, every day is different. I'd say 10 years ago, my, my days were mostly about doing research, uh, working with external historians, working with the team, understanding their needs and trying to promote uh, elements of the past that they didn't know of. On, on various aspects, uh, whether it's technology, archaeology, uh, if it's uh, uh, cultures, uh, songs, uh, uh, political treaties, so really everything. And with time, I was more and more involved into partnerships with uh, museums and universities. And as, as I was trying to lead the project with the Discovery Tour, uh, my role changed into a role of, of a director where the idea is more to try to, to call the shot with the, with the producer. We're trying to plan many years ahead, and then we're making sure that what we plan are ex is executed from beginning to end of the project. So that it's, it's a very different work, uh, and I appreciate it because, it, again, it's a real passion to do this. Yeah, thanks for the inside look. And um, now I come back uh, to Assassin's Creed Unity a little bit, as you mentioned it. Um, because, while, uh, of course, while looking at the history of Assassin's Creed series in its uh, entirety, there's one burning question in particular coming up with regards uh, to the Discovery Tour. Um, and that is, will there also be Discovery Tours for the previous games? Um, or are these scenarios lost forever? Because I know especially Lucas uh, would love a Discovery Tour about French Revolution. And this is such a big topic in uh, schools in Germany. So it would be really nice. <laughs> 
I, I agree. I can only say it. I totally agree in my heart. Uh, that's that's really where, the, the, again, the point where I decided that I wanted to do a uh, discovery tour or what would become the discovery tour. Uh, at this point, I'm unable to say if we're going to do it or not. Uh, to, to, be, uh, to be super honest, there are lots of challenges to come back and do it. Uh, so... I guess we'll we'll have to wait and see, but I do agree that uh, it's it's a topic that is uh, that is uh, told uh, in many many countries uh, worldwide because it's a it's a it's a very important factor of uh, of uh, democracy and and the history of of politics. So it has a lot of value. Uh, I guess we'll have to live to see it. Because we wait a little bit more. <laughs> And um, the next question, maybe, um, after developing now, you said it free discovery tools with your team. Um, how would you take stock of the work so far? Um, what do you think works well for the tools and where do you see even more potential for uh, improvement? Well, the, the first thing that we uh, that we tested when we were developing the discovery tour with, so uh, we tested it with uh, 11 classes uh, before we released the game. Uh, and I think the first the first biggest value is engagement, and this is something that still comes up as always as the first factor. Uh, teacher teachers mentioned that students arrive on time and they leave on time. Nobody wants to go to the restroom. So jo joke aside, it, it means that they are engaged. They want to do it. Uh, the flip side to that is that it has to be unique. Uh, if it's video games all the time, then it doesn't have the same appeal. I, I guess like any teaching technique, uh, you have to vary a lot uh, to make sure that there's a there's always interest in, in new subjects. Um, the one of the the, the the difficulty with the discovery tour is that it serves different purposes, uh, and so uh, it, it let's use. Let's take a look at two con different contexts. One is a, prof a university professor or researcher that is doing a critic of the game. So maybe they're playing and they're doing a critic uh, or they're asking their students to criticize. So that's maybe one console or one game for the for a whole class. Whereas uh, maybe in, in, other, in an other situation, you have uh, two students per computer or per, per console and they have their teacher has asked them to look for certain details in the discovery tour so playing the tours itself is not the only aim that they have they have let's say to to look at civil, civilizational aspects so they have to find out why in ancient egypt we would say it's a civilization so the game doesn't answer that alone the students are tasked to do something so that's a, one of the big challenges that we were facing as a discovery tour is that we are aware that there are many uses that vary greatly between ages and regions and we're, we're trying to find solutions with that um, and we know that teachers know best but because we also know that not all teachers are familiar with video games or comfortable uh, we're also working with mcgill university in montreal to uh, create uh, curriculum guides for teachers that will be published uh, uh, up in the upcoming uh, in the up upcoming year so uh, uh, we were aware that that was a need before we started but at the same at the same time we we had to do one step after the other first prove that the game made sense it could be uh, useful in, in schools to to learn various topics like history, geography, mathematics, second language, for instance. And then we're, we're building brick by brick in, uh, uh, over what we've been able to accomplish. Uh, and so maybe one last, last thing about this question is that, so what's the added value or what is the biggest strength of the Discover Tour? Again, of course there's engagement, but also there's the ability for people to go around, uh, for students to go around to visit the locations. Uh, I think, It, this is a tremendous strength um, uh, because it allows you to see something that doesn't exist anymore or that never existed, uh, depending on the level of authenticity or not. Uh, and I, again, I think it can create an opportunity to have a discussion uh, and then to, to criticize. I think personally that criticizing the video game is a very good exercise. Uh, I, I remember doing it at university for movies and it was always very useful because you, you, you are made aware of the, the constraint of the medium also. So for instance, movies, maybe they last two hours. So in two hours, they have to, to create a, a compelling storyline. Video games also have their own, uh, their own structure. And I think by, uh, by put, bringing the video game in the classroom, it allows for discussion uh, and for more critical thinking and to make people more aware, uh, at least have an opportunity to talk about it and be more aware. So these are some of the strains, I think, of the discovery tour. I mentioned a few of them. Uh, I, I think, again, teachers know best. They, they'll adapt it to their needs uh, and, and uses vary 
greatly around different places also. Yeah, thank you. Um, I go on with the next question, and it's about a little bit of foreshadowing. Um, where do you want the Discovery Tour to go in the coming years? Or is the plan not set in stone? And of course, you will already know about the next historic topic, um, the historical scenario that will be covered by the Assassin's Creed franchise. And we know that you can talk about it. But um, yeah, can you maybe tell us a little bit uh, about uh, the upcoming directions of the tours and your work and strategies to make it even bigger? Well, well, I can tell you two things. First is that we're 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 releasing this fall the next Discovery Tour, which is Discovery Tour Viking Age. So for us, of course, that's the biggest uh, focus point for uh, for the Discovery Tour team. Uh, it, it's, it means that we're launching the game, we're promoting it, and we're uh, actively participating in a lot of uh, uh, conferences also. And we, we will be receiving a lot of feedback. We will analyze also how uh, how uh, players are using it, and we'll see if the new formula that we're bringing is val more valuable, less valuable. Uh, um, so we have a good uh, have a good idea at this point of what we're doing. Uh, so I guess this is going to be the really central point for us but of course we're always planning for the future uh, i mentioned it earlier that we as as a as a production we're always thinking of what we can do in the future what what we want to do uh, we we still have uh, i think a lot of passion to create more compelling game and historical games at least i am i'm very passionate about it so mm -hmm. i hope it doesn't stop um so I guess we'll we'll have to see. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see in the upcoming months what ha what happens with the release of the upcoming Discovery Tour, and I hope people really really like it. Thank you. And um, maybe um, a little bit more to that. Um, is there any particular epoch that you uh, personally would like to uh, work on in the future? And um, to get a little bit back on the dark side of histories, picking up the question about this, um, is there any chance that an Assassin's Creed game could also be set in one of the darker uh, or most cruel times of history, like uh, First or Second World War? Or um, do you think this is too sensitive for the Assassin's Creed narrative? Because from an educational perspective, um, as a teacher, that would be one of the most help helpful uh, things to work with, um, but also very, very challenging. Um, in school classes. So, so again, there are multiple answers to this. Uh, first of is what I would like to do. I used to say I wanted to do ancient Egypt. And then at some point uh, I had to stop saying it because we were actually creating it. <laughs> uh, so so ever since I focused uh, on something else that I, I also really want to do is uh, the Lutheran reform or at least the period of the Lutheran reform. I think there's, uh, and I'm not saying this because we're, we're in Germany, but I, I would really, really like to, to have this opportunity to talk about a subject that I don't think is known as well, or at least the time period I think is not known as well. So, uh, and there are lots of, of uh, nice landscapes. There are lots of, of interesting people and an interesting subject to create a compelling Assassin's Creed game. So we'll see if that ha ever happens. Um, of course, Talking about future Assassin's Creed game, I wouldn't be able to say anything. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll we'll have to wait and see. And regarding games uh, with the First and Second World War, I, I, I think uh, people in the company have given better answers than than I, I would do. Uh, but I I do believe that usually we try to stick away from uh, time periods that are too close to uh, to the actual era with Assassin's Creed because. The past has so much, so much depth and value, uh, that and there are so many games out there that are already covering uh, first and second world war. So, I'm not sure at this point that that would be the best for us, even just in terms of mechanic and gameplay, because it would involve more uh, more gunpowder. And I think we're we've we've approached that with Assassin's Creed Syndicate with the 90th uh, century uh, industrial revolution. I don't know, I don't know if we'll ever come closer to that in, in terms of uh, time period. Uh, but there are already a lot of, of very good games out there. And even for historical teaching, uh, I think of just of Valiant Hearts. Uh, that was also made by Ubisoft, but in, in uh, Montpellier, I yeah. think they've done a tremendous tremendous work working with archives, with even family archives, and they crowdsourced also uh, uh, people's archives to bring uh, forward uh, uh, mostly nonviolent uh, history. Uh, and that's very touching. I think that, that brings a lot of compassion. So. Again, um, it's difficult to answer for the future, but I do hope it's going to continue. Yeah, thanks for the little piece of foreshadowing.
nevertheless. <laughs> and um, now my last question would be, um, while working with the discovery tool at school and when telling um, other history teachers about it, um, the main concern uh, raised about the series was often that it represents and produces a very strong image of history, in German a particular Geschichtsbild, um, which maybe even is too captivating. Um, young school kids could have problems to understand that what is shown to them um, isn't real history. And I particularly um, also recognize this uh, when teaching my fifth grade, um, where nine out of 10 people uh, told me after that, uh, that I thought uh, this is the real representation of the past uh, that is shown in the Discovery Tour. Do you see this as a problem or more as I see it? Um, is this even a great chance um, to capitalize on because pupils can learn about the power of the historic narratives and different forms of narration uh, already and at an early stage and uh, therefore are more prepared to uh, scrutinize their view of the story uh, in games, films or media later on in their life and in the future and now with the internet get an even bigger. Uh, well, I, we totally share the same vision. Uh, for me, the Discovery Tour was already a way to uh, to get people to understand a bit better the history behind what was Assassin's Creed. I think uh, people are going to play video games anyways. So if it's played in a classroom, uh, again, I think it, at least it creates an opportunity to have a discussion. Um, the Discovery Tour offers some some solutions, but again, the uh, it has to come also uh, from from uh, from a discussion with the teacher. It has to come from an, an assignment an assignment from a teacher, for instance. Um, uh, and what you're saying, we, we see it also with studies that we're doing with the University of Montreal. Uh, so we have now thousands of students who are, were part of the studies. And of course, there's a huge part of the students that don't that don't challenge the vision that they see within either the Discovery Tour or Assassin's Creed. And so again, we're trying to strengthen this with uh, when we're discussing with teacher just to, to say that it's up to them if they want to, but I think uh, uh, media, uh, media training or media uh, cultural training is is super important nowadays, uh, especially when regarding to facts uh, and to what information we get. It's so it's not just a video game thing; it's really a, a huge planetary thing. Uh, and if at least we have that discussion in a classroom, uh, because they wanted to play the video game for fun, at least that's that's really uh, that's really the good side instead of just trying to force them uh, to do something that maybe they're not interested. In as much. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> Coming to the last question, uh, but before that, I just wanted to say that I, as an early modern historian, I would really appreciate a discovery too about the Reformation, of course. Um, so, the last question um, during the preparations of our workshop, and as shown uh, in Patrick's ex experience, we were often confronted with skepticism and sometimes even harsh criticism with regard to the relevance of the topic and our proximity also to a private enterprise such as Ubisoft. And you must be used to uh, such forms of criticism. So, maybe as a short, Final remark, as an historian working at Ubisoft, do you have any recommendations uh, as to how to reply to such criticism and uh, sometimes even ignorance uh, of the medium and its potential? Well, well, the Discover Tour is made in, in partnership with uh, historians. Their name is credited in the in every Discover Tour game. Uh, so uh, so pe that people that are out there, they, they, they put their name, their name on the game ultimately because they agree with what's in what's in it in terms of uh, facts. Um, we also work with uh, professors, uh, again, to do a study. Uh, we've done it for the, the last many years now, and we, we take this very seriously. So uh, hopefully people can embrace it uh, if they want to. Uh, but it's, uh, again, video games are there. Uh, if, if we use this opportunity to, to bring it into the classroom and have a discussion, I think it's healthier when it's in a, in a format that's controlled then if we just think that it's going to go away uh, which isn't um and then we don't act upon it so i think it's it is the place of place of the university for instance to teach about media literacy and about the strengths and limits of a video game as well and that's the aim of our workshop in fact so perfect <laughs> ending to this interview so uh thank you very much for this interview maxime and for your time and, and your open-mindedness and uh last thing to say is just all the best for the coming weeks yeah, all the best. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity.